Airbus is on a roll. After years of fierce back and forth, the company has officially leapfrogged Boeing to become the world's biggest airplane maker. And if you've read the news, you might think its recent success lies squarely on the shoulders of two jets, the A350 and the A321 XLR. Now don't get me wrong, these two aircraft are phenomenal. The A350 is packed with game-changing tech, while the XLR has rewritten the rules for narrowbody operations. But the plane that sits between them, the A330neo, has received a lot less fanfare. Even though the A330 family has a storied history, the Neo is often overlooked. But here's the thing, this plane is far more important to Airbus's current and future success than you might think. After all, it's currently dominating one of the most important aviation markets in the world. Let me explain. Before hopping into it today, I just wanted to say that I love my job. Being a YouTuber comes with a lot of perks. I get to travel, be my own boss, and share stories that I'm passionate about. But there is one big downside. Having my email out there means that I get a lot of spam, sketchy offers, and phishing attempts. And all of that is thanks to data brokers. These are companies that collect your personal info, like your email, age, location, and more, and sell it to marketers, scammers, or basically anyone who wants it. And that's why I started using Delete Me, today's sponsor. Delete Me is a privacy service that scans hundreds of these shady sites on your behalf, and then actually gets your data removed. Within just days of starting to use it, I got a full report that showed me where my data was found and how it's been removed. And because Delete Me is constantly monitoring, it means that your data doesn't just come down, it stays down. If you're online, and let's be honest, you're watching this video so you probably are, it's definitely worth keeping your info safe. And if you go to joindeleteme.com slash kobeexplains and use the code kobeexplains at checkout, you'll get 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. In order to understand why the A330neo is so important to Airbus's future, we first need to understand the region that it's currently dominating, Asia Pacific. So Asia Pacific is one of the largest and if not the largest and fastest growing market in the world for aviation. And we're expecting to have about 20,000 additional aircraft mm. to come from this region and about 4,000 of those will be wide bodies. In terms of the hard numbers, usually when it comes to wide bodies, it's a half and half battle, you know, across the world. But in Asia Pacific, I think we are almost 60% in terms of win rate here. Realizing a 60% win rate in this industry is a really big deal. And the A330neo has played a vital role in Airbus's success in the region. Nearly half of all NEO customers are based in APAC, China, and South Asia, with airlines drawn to its strong economics. By incorporating lightweight materials, a new wing, and ultra-high bypass engine, the NEO sees a 14% fuel burn improvement over the original A330 and a 25% improvement over the 767. But let's be honest, fuel efficiency is a major selling point for all airlines, no matter what corner of the world they're from. And yet, the NEO seems to have unique appeal in Asia. Why is that? Well, it all boils down to a single word, versatility. You see, Asian carriers face some really unique challenges. The region is so diverse, and its airlines need a Swiss army knife of a plane to tackle all its idiosyncrasies. Arguably the biggest challenge that its airlines face is geography. APAC is home to some of the most distinct and varied geography on Earth. On one hand, the region's huge, far larger than North America or Europe. I mean, it's massive. I mean, Asia Pacific, we're talking about all the way to Tahiti, to going way, way west, going Korea to almost close to the Antarctic. Mm -hmm. So it's massive. But despite these vast distances, the region is also home to some of the busiest short-haul routes in the world. 
At first, this might seem like a contradiction, but it actually underscores this region's strong reliance on air travel. In many cases, flying isn't just the most efficient way to get around. It's the only way. Indonesia, as an example, has 14,000 islands. You have to cross oceans where there is no road network or train network. We're talking, depending on where you put the, the circle around the map, uh, around here, we're talking 60, 70, 80 percent of the world's population. Sure. So that's ev almost everybody. And when you look at the top 10, top 20 busiest routes in the world, almost all of them are in this region. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty short. Yeah. When you look at them, they're pretty short. The upshot is that regional players need a plane that, one, can fly a whole lot of passengers, and two, fly both short and long distances alike. And this is an area in which the NEO really shines. Of course, we already know it's an endurance monster. With its 64 meter wingspan, it can store enough fuel to fly 7,200 nautical miles. As a result, flying long, intra-regional missions like Sydney to Seoul or Singapore to Noumea is a breeze. But at the same time, the jet's been built in a way that makes it just as capable on short missions. That starts with the engine. The aircraft is powered exclusively by the Trent 7000, the latest engine from Rolls-Royce. It draws on lessons learned from the Trent XWB program that came before it, which has made it not just Rolls-Royce's most efficient engine, but also its most reliable. It boasts a 99.9% .9 dispatch reliability, zero in-flight shutdowns, and a 60% reduction in maintenance hours. In addition, Rolls-Royce has recently redesigned the engine's high-pressure turbine blade to improve its time on wing. Having a power plant that's this capable is a revelation for short-haul operators. After all, their aircraft experience far more takeoff and landing cycles, phases of flight where the engines face high workloads. And the Trent 7000 has proven itself more than resilient in the face of this extra wear. Of course, high cycle operations don't just affect the engines, they also affect the landing gear. So Airbus has worked to reinforce them as well. This hardened landing gear also has a secondary benefit. It allows the NEO to carry even more weight and in turn more fuel and passengers. This means that airlines who have a fleet of NEOs don't have to pick and choose which ones fly on short missions and which fly on long ones. These aircraft are completely interchangeable. The 330 NEO, it is an incredible aircraft because it is made for these kind of distances where it can do a really short route with 450 passengers and then turn around and do an inter intercontinental route. Sure. The same aircraft. And that is absolutely invaluable. That's the kind of versatility you, you look at. Okay, so geographical diversity is the first reason why the NEO is so popular in APAC. But it's far from the only reason. In addition to being geographically diverse, APAC is also economically diverse. Places like Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Sydney are economic powerhouses, with exceedingly high per capita GDPs. And because of that, there are plenty of airlines in the region that cater to premium travelers. If you look at the top 10 airlines in the world today, in terms of the, the premium rankings, you'd see a majority of them are in this region you have the ultra luxury carriers such as Starlux sure. or full service carriers, flag carriers like Aruda, Malaysia, who are bringing in these aircraft, who are able to connect Asia all the way to Europe. For these airlines, having a state of the art jet is an absolute must. And the NEO answers the call as it's arguably the most comfortable wide body jet in the world. But before we unpack why the NEO is so much more cozy than its peers, I just wanted to share a quick milestone. I'm coming up on my five year anniversary on YouTube. I'm also getting really close to 300,000 subscribers and I'd love to hit that before the channel's birthday. So if you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying it, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button to help me get there. I really appreciate it. Okay. Now let's get back to why the NEO is the most comfy widebody in the sky. For one, its standard eight abreast setup and coach offers some of the widest seats in the industry, and they're significantly wider than its direct competition. To sweeten the pot, the plane also has fewer middle seats. 
75% of passengers flying the Neo will either enjoy the window or the aisle. Of course, seating is just one part of the equation. There's a whole lot more to the Neo that makes it a joy to fly. Comfort is not just, you know, the seats. The seats are a key part, but it's also the pressurization, the humidity, it's the lighting. It's a whole slew of other factors. And what may surprise most people is in the world, it is the latest generation aircraft because it's the last aircraft model that has been launched. It is a baby, so it's even newer than the 350 itself. When you walk into a 330 Neo, you can't tell the difference between that and a 350 in terms of the cabin, sure. in terms of the comfort. And the consumers, the air passengers love the aircraft. Okay, so the Neo is packed with creature comforts, which helps it cater to high-end passengers. But at the same time, it's also flexible enough to enable low-cost operations. While most airlines opt for that roomy, eight abreast layout, the jet can also seat nine abreast. This dramatically reduces seat mile cost and allows carriers to sell ultra-low fares. When you consider that large parts of APAC are still developing, this makes air travel accessible to far more people. These are growing economies. The demographics are on a wide spectrum. It's the fastest growing GDP part of the world where the majority of the people here have never even set foot in an aircraft. So cost is important. And there is no aircraft per seat that can reach the cost of an A330 Neo on this planet, period. And it gets passed on to the consumers who can have low airfare. So that's a big deal. Another thing that low cost operators love is just how cost effective the A330 platform is. We've already talked about the plane's impressive efficiency. But what's even more impressive is how it actually achieves that efficiency boost. Airbus didn't need to make radical changes to the platform. Rather, they made thoughtful, targeted upgrades that have ensured the Neo retains commonality with its predecessor. This is really, really important when you consider just how popular the original A330 CO is in the region. One out of three wide bodies in this region are A330 COs. So if any carrier already has an A330 CO, this is an easy transition to this brand new modern aircraft. So it makes absolute sense to make the switch. One of the most, if not the most important trait that the Neo shares with its predecessor is its cockpit and flight control architecture, which helps airlines save big time on pilot training. Over the next 20 years, um, we, we expect 20 to 170,000 um, new pilots to be trained. Uh, that's is basically 13,000 a year. So if you look at the cockpit, actually, of an Airbus's plane, you will see commonalities on the architecture, the avionics systems, uh, the behaviors, it's, it's really common. So there is an, a huge cost-saving aspect of it. It's a minimalistic impact for the airlines already operating an initial fleet. Now, this commonality is really, really great for existing A330 operators. But Airbus doesn't want to gatekeep here. They want to make sure that any and all airlines can buy into the program. Because of this, they've spent a lot of time and effort building a state-of-the-art training center in Singapore, a city-state that very much serves as a hub for the region. This facility ensures that low-cost carriers, who may not have the resources to build their own training programs, can adopt the jet no sweat. Our Bus Asia Training Center, so we call it AATC, uh, just to shorten a bit, is the largest Airbus training center, as you mentioned correctly. We have two 320 simulators, we have two A330 simulators, we have one A380, and we have four 350 simulators. Coming to an Airbus training center has a big advantage because any place you go, the course will always be the same, will always be given in the same manner. We are an aircraft manufacturer first, but also we are the one defining the uh, procedures for operating our aircraft. Who better than Airbus can know how to teach our lines out to operate our own craft. So even a trainee that is starting maybe here in Singapore and has to move for any reason in Miami or Dubai will be guaranteed to have the same course. This facility has further deepened Airbus's regional ties. It's allowed the company to learn directly from pilots in the region while also strengthening their bonds with customers within APAC and beyond. 
Today we count 88 customers in, in Training Center. Uh, Chinese operator, Taiwanese, um, even European actually comes here. Uh, we are very proud to have those numbers and an alliance can always count on a very large network of Fairbus Training Center worldwide. So wherever you are, there's always been a training center close by. Okay, so hopefully it's now clear why the A330neo is so popular in the region. APAC is quite diverse, and the Neo is a Swiss army knife. But I actually want to end this discussion by looking beyond APAC. Sure, this region has served as a proving ground for the Neo's capabilities, but it's far from the only place on Earth that needs it. Africa, South America, India, and others face many of the same constraints. They have limited transit infrastructure, diverse wealth distribution, and rapidly growing populations. As a result, I think we're on the verge of seeing the Neo explode in popularity. What it's done in APAC will serve as a template for what it can do for the rest of the world. And as it makes an impact, it'll evangelize many more customers to both Airbus and its philosophy, helping the jet maker further grow its lead against Boeing. So while the Neo may be Airbus's most overlooked jet today, it's got just as bright a future as any other plane in the sky. So what do you guys think? Is the Neo the most versatile jet in the world or is there another one out there? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and I also wanted to take a second to let you know that I just revamped my merch store. It's got new gear, higher quality prints, and also lower prices. To mark this relaunch, I'm gonna give away a few of these sweet A330 Neo t-shirts. All you gotta do is leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite A330neo operator is and why. And from there, I'll pick a few of my favorites. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and wanna help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.